HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hopkinton Middle School and High School got to meet the 2014 Boston Marathon men's champion, Meb Kaflegzi. The police met up with the Hopkinton Special Olympics team to play some basketball, and HCAM's Hopkinton Coffee Break celebrated their one year anniversary. But first, Colella's closed their supermarket doors after 70 years in business. Throughout their time in business, Colella's became one of the favorite spots to shop and socialize for many of the locals. The Colella family has also helped or donated to many local organizations. 45-year veteran and one of the current owners of Colella's, Dale Danahy, was honored by the school committee for the many years of service that her family and the supermarket provided to the town. And it's everybody is always at Colella's. And um, so anyway, you've also worked so hard as a member of the community to support the Chamber of Commerce, to support so many different organizations, the ADA committee in particular, and help us get the town um, and the schools into better compliance for, for people um, with physical disabilities. You've worked on so many different initiatives, committees, um, all for the betterment of the town. So we just all wanted to say congratulations on a job very well done. We wish you well on the next chapter. I hope it brings you as much pride and joy as this chapter has. And um, I just think that, you know, Kalel has really set the gold standard as a model of a family business run by a family, but that includes the entire town in their family, and we appreciate that. So thank you for very, very much for everything that you've done. <laughs> All right. So now I'm supposed to talk and not cry. Sure. <laughs> Uh, actually, I've enjoyed being on the school council, and I've been on the school council for every school here um, over the years, and that was always fun. Um, oh, and junior achievements. Junior achievements. I I, yes, I've done several years of uh, teaching junior achievements at several of the schools as well. Um, there was a, a um, program where they were trying to um, streamline lunch programs and, and uh, make sure that kids were eating healthy and I helped with that program in the beginning as well I forget what it was called um, but I've enjoyed every bit of it um, I've been at the supermarket 45 years and it was fun it was great to see your neighbors shopping where people didn't see their neighbors in the neighborhood but they could always stop and, and see somebody and it, it used to be funny when we'd get a phone call from a husband that says my wife went in there about two hours ago is she still there <laughs> Most of the time they'd be talking, so um, it was great to put in a coffee area. For years, everybody said, give us a place where we can sit and meet our neighbors, and uh, that was a well-used area that uh, a lot of people enjoyed. So um, we've loved serving the town. Um, it's been a great run. 70 years was awesome, and uh, unfortunately, all things have to come to an end. And you know, I will continue being in the town as a uh, volunteer. I intend to go to the senior center, the uh, project just because, hang out at the library and read books that I have boxes of that I've never had the time to do, do some traveling, but I'm not going anywhere. I'll still be around town, so if they need a junior achievements, um, I enjoyed community reading as well at Elmwood and center. So um, I hope I still get asked. But uh, I've enjoyed every bit of it. It's been a great relationship. The school has been awesome. I tried to count how many hundreds of students we've had over the years, and um, 
it's it's plenty. It's a lot. Um, we also tried to add up how much money we had donated over the years, and we stopped after we got over a million. Oh my gosh! So yeah. um, it, the town's been good to us, um, and it's easy to reciprocate. So thank okay. you for this. I appreciate it. Colellas will certainly be missed by many around the community. The Hopkinton Police Department got a chance to test their basketball skills against the Hopkinton Special Olympics team. The annual basketball game between the police department and Special Olympics team was attended by many and a good time was had by all and a successful effort to benefit a great cause. The Hopkinton Police took on the Special Olympics team in a basketball game. The police put up a good fight, but were not able to keep up with the Special Olympics team. The cheerleaders even got a chance to come in for the police a couple of times, but a great time was had by all for a great cause. And this is an event that we've been doing probably around 10 years. I haven't really kept track of the years, but we do it every year for the uh, kids for the Special Olympics. Off the special, but um, It's a fun uh, event for all of us. The police department loves doing it. Um, we have pizzas donated from uh, Dino's Pizza down in uh, West Hopkinton. Uh, TJ's, they also donate salads and cookies. Uh, and uh, a lot of parents bring uh, goodies and treats and all kinds of stuff for after the event. They also have a comfort dog coming in later on, so uh, when we're eating, they'll be able to go over and hang out with the comfort dog. And now a big turnout here uh, today. This event seems to get a great amount of support around the community. Yeah, it, it really does, and it, you know it is a great event. And you know our guys, you know, look at them. They enjoy it every year. You know, half of the department comes out, the other half has to work. But they would be here too. So, but yeah, we got a great support system. Uh, we even have the Hopkinton Hill and cheerleaders. You know, they usually come, but they have a very busy schedule because they're in a lot of tournaments. Now, are you going to get out there today and uh, play some ball? No, someone has to coach this team. We've lost every game so far, so I, I have a good feeling, you know, we've been practicing, so hopefully they're going to come back and uh, win this year. Tie score, so we're on our way. Now, are you worried about the coaching job, seeing that they haven't had so much success? Yeah, I may be replaced pretty soon, so you never know, so we got to win at least one game to keep me employed here. Despite the great effort by the police and coaching performance of Officer Powers, the Hopkinton police came out on the short side of the game. Chief Lee talked with us after the match. Uh, it's a great event for a great cause, Special Olympics, and uh, you know I got to thank Officer pa Powers for helping put this together. Um, it's my second year doing this, and uh, we lost both times, so I think uh, I think conditioning was a problem. So we're gonna work on that and uh, maybe get a, a, a big win next year, just like we did in bocce. Yeah, maybe, maybe you got to play more bocce to get right. that going. Are you going to take your frustrations out in the bocce throwdown this year? You better believe it. <laughs> I'm just glad nobody got injured today. <laughs> now, uh, they also had uh, some help from some of the high school team as well. I saw you out there uh, playing with those guys. That must have been pretty tough. Oh, yeah, that was, it was a little scary. Running, I haven't run like that in a while. I think the last time I ran that fast was chasing a bad guy. <laughs> but, yep. <laughs> Some good practice for you then. Exactly. <laughs> Next year, if we get tasers, we might bring them. That might help us. <laughs> there you go. Any advantage you can get, right? Right. All right, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you. At the event, HCAM News also caught up with Hopkinton Special Olympics Program Director Alec Levine. The Hopkinton Special Olympics started 11 years ago, uh, and it has grown to encompass between 40 and 50 athletes and a similar number of partners. Special Olympics is a unified sport where athletes and partners play side by side and uh, we uh, have been doing that for now 11 years. We have four teams, at uh, two of which are at the player development level, which are a little lower skilled. We have a unified team, which is a more competitive team, and we have a traditional team made up of athletes who don't play with partners. And we've grown the program to include athletes from all of the surrounding towns. Uh, and it's, it's really developed into uh, quite a, a well-respected program. And uh, here today, everyone seemed to have a, a great time, an excellent turnout, and uh, the event was a lot of fun. This is the highlight of our season. Uh, we are fortunate enough to play an awful lot of games during the course of the year. Uh, we have been able to offer community games at Hopkinton High School often 
We go to the state games, which is a highlight of many program seasons. But the real highlight of the Hopkinton season is this game against the Hopkinton Police Department. They are a, a, a wonderful set of officers and very respectful to the athletes. And it's, it's, it, it shows the real community-based uh, support that Hopkinton offers its athletes. I'm not sure how many years in a row we've been doing this. We seem to be winning quite handily with each of these events, but it's been a wonderful event. Yeah, I was talking to Officer Powers and uh, Chief Lee before, and uh, they were saying they really need to work on conditioning. They just can't keep up with you guys. Especially when we put in some of our uh, a little more competitive athletes. But they do a wonderful job, and, and certainly it's not about winning. It's, it's so much more just uh, the camaraderie that everyone has developed with each other. Just by the number of fans who come out, they're not all parents. They're people who are just very supportive of what Special Olympics is all about. Still to come on HCAM News, the 2014 Boston Marathon champion in the men's division spoke to students at Hopkinton Middle and High School. HCAM's Hopkinton Coffee Break celebrated their one-year anniversary, and Courtney will let you know what is coming up with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. We will be right back after a quick break. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here, and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org, and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give us a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. 2014 marked the first time in 31 years that an American won the men's division of the Boston Athletic Association Marathon. Meb Kaflegzi crossed the finish line at a time of 2 hours, 8 minutes, and 37 seconds. The time broke Meb's personal best time for completing a marathon. And not only did Meb become the first American to win on the men's side in 31 years, he became the first runner in history to win the Boston Marathon, New York Marathon, and an Olympic medal. Meb recently spoke to the students at Hopkinton Middle School and later at the high school about his obstacle-filled road to success. As part of the Desire to Inspire program, which serves the goal to inspire through the marathon, 2014 Boston Marathon winner Meb Kaflesky was greeted loudly as he entered Hopkinton Middle School and at the high school, Meb was greeted with Welcome Meb signs featuring the Hiller H. Meb talked to students about being brought up in East Africa at a time of war, coming to America as a refugee, and what led to his road to becoming the first American Boston Marathon champion in 31 years. Meb encouraged the students to follow their dreams and never give up. You want to do something greater than yourself, you are going to achieve great things and you never know when that day is going to come. So you do the right thing, keep working hard, and keep doing being yourself. So last year when I came here to Hopkins and getting started for the race, I was excited, it was emotional, it was tough, but you know you're going to give it the Boston strong, I want to give a map strong. I came with three goals, to win, even though many people thought I didn't have a chance to win because I was 38 years old. I want to finish on the podium, plan B. Third plan was to run a personal best. But when you work hard and do the best that you can, only you know what you can do. And I did, not that I only win, but I ran my fastest marathon ever. It's great to be in Hopkinton to be able to share my story of last year, but also my upbringing, how hard work and discipline and commitment can get you through a lot of things. Success does not happen overnight, but if you persistent with it and not give up, great things will happen. And here are the future of our next generation and just tell them, hey, keep on working hard, be the best you can be, and who knows what they're going to be. You got to be able to dig deep to do the best that you can. And you look back and he says, am I maintaining the gap or the guy is closing on me? You have to do the best that you can because 
not just for yourself, but for Bostonians, but for America, but for the international. I mean, it's a lifetime, a lifetime of discipline and hard work and consistency that I'll uh, be able to win the victory. You know, it's not for lack of training, trying. I was third in 2006 and then I was ten, uh, fifth in 2010, but I worked very hard last year just because it was probably going to be my last marathon and what was on, on the line and uh, gave my, my all and I was ready to, to live with a consequence if I get caught. But I just gave them the Boston Strong, Mev Strong, and I came with the victory and uh, personal best. And, uh, I feel delighted to be the first American in 31 years to do that. Quite an unbelievable achievement. Now you'll be running again uh, this year. You're hoping to beat last year's record? You know, I'm here with the same goal. I want to be win. I want to be in the podium or run a personal best. If I could do any of those three, I'll be very delighted. And obviously, hey, if I could win it again, that would be huge. The students also got the chance to ask the 2014 Boston Marathon winner questions. Um, what has been your biggest struggle as you've been trying to achieve your goals? You have this internal information what you are capable of doing and not doing. In 2011, I was a Nike athlete for a long time, for 12 years. And at one point, it says, you know, you're getting old and they didn't renew the contract. But I never went for the money of, or media. I just worked hard to get that seventh grade P class that I ran 520 to maximize that potential. So sometimes you get a struggle, but if you work hard and believe in what you want to do, you're gonna you're gonna achieve it. I mean, if I had my you know with other company, I have I would have retired probably in 2012. But I still love it. I still have a good time and enjoy it. And I'm competitive Ghana guy. I want to compete this year. I'll be here on April 20th to hopefully defend my title and then make maybe hopefully make one more Olympic team in 2016. Selectman John Mosier welcomed Meb as an honorary citizen of Hopkinton. Last year was different from years past. It was our chance to show the world that our way of life will not be deterred. Our freedoms will not be intimidated. It called upon us to ensure this race and this town would not shy from adversity. An American who faced potentially career-ending adversity and yet stayed the course became the champion of the Boston Marathon. Your heart and your victory speak to us all. You represented us all. Meb, you are our champion. And now I'd like to present you this proclamation designating you as an honorary citizen of Hopkinton. From the town of Hopkinton, the Board of Selectmen hereby recognizes Mebraham Meb Kefladzi, 2014 Boston Marathon winner and first American to win the Boston men's race since 1983 as honorary citizen of the town of Hopkinton, signed under our hand and seal this 17th day of March 2015. Believe it or not, Meb will be right back in Hopkinton in less than a month. On Monday, April 20th, he will compete in the 2015 Boston Marathon. HCAM's Hopkinton Coffee Break program emerged from a Facebook page created a few years ago called Real Housewives of Hopkinton for friends and neighbors who were interested in local news and activities. In March 2014, masterminds of the Real Housewives of Hopkinton page, Connie Wright, Darlene Hayes, and founder Patricia Duart recorded their first episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break featuring lighthearted conversation and information on happenings around town. One year later, Hopkinton Coffee Break is still going strong, and the hosts reflected about their time with the show. The ladies of Hopkinton Coffee Break celebrated the one-year anniversary of the show. The hosts got makeovers and enjoyed some cake to celebrate the event. Joelle Skin Care and Makeup, as well as Uptown Salon, helped make over the hosts for the big day. Courtney caught up with the hosts to reflect on the past year. I sort of chuckle because in the beginning, I know I was nervous, um, uncomfortable. It, it, it was both a format and, and something I wasn't used to doing, and it is not something that I would put in my natural um, comfort zone. I am the one in the family that takes pictures. I'm behind the lens. I'm really in front of the lens. 
I do a lot of support for political campaigns, but I don't run for the campaign. And so for me, it's been this gentle process of actually getting comfortable with being in front of the camera. And while I'm never shy of my own opinions, I do that more in the bravado of my close friends. So to suddenly share those with a wider audience has been quite an experience for me. But I, I feel as a group, we've grown and gelled. We've found our own and gotten comfortable. Um, I look forward to the next year because I'm sure it'll be a progression where we will continue to evolve and grow. But I, I'm really happy how we've uh, evolved. We've had a guest to the show, and we've had a wonderful time, uh, including those people. We've made the focus on the community and what's going on in the community. Uh, it, it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been an interesting ride. Um, none, none of us came with any professional experience about being you know, on TV, and certainly not me. Um, so it's been a real evolution and development for me personally. Um, it's been a lot of fun to meet the various people that uh, we've met through the show and on the Facebook page. And, um, you know, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a way to stay connected around things in town. I do a lot of work in Boston. I'm an empty nester now, so I don't get the same flow of information that we used to when the, when the kids were home. And, you know, I'm not sure where it's going to go, honestly. Um, as long as it's good, we'll continue, and uh, I think it will evolve and take shape. And my thoughts have been a lot about personal enlightenment, being coming more comfortable with myself, being more comfortable being on camera, talking to people like yourself, and you know, talking to some of the people that we bring in as guests, whether they're a state rep, you know, a charity founder, um, and also that it's been a very much that, you know, Connie Patricia and I. Connie and I had somewhat of a little rapport as an acquaintance. Patricia and I were total strangers before the show started. That these two other women this have become probably my close, a couple of my closest friends ever. The hosts of Hopkinton Coffee Break, Patricia Duard, Connie Wright, and Darlene Hayes, reflected on their thoughts after having their one-year anniversary show. A lot of it is that how important the Real Housewives page has become to the community to the point where the Chamber of Commerce has reached out to us, the town manager, some regional like heads of businesses saying, you know, can you help us support this? Can you get involved? And, you know, that it's very important for us to promote, you know, women networking together, women's businesses, and how we can actually all support one another. Well, wow, I just, uh, just want to express appreciation and gratitude for the support and the interest in this show and uh, for the relationships that I have formed and will continue to form. Uh, it, it's all good. And uh, I thank you, Courtney, so much for everything you've done to support us and just working with you has been a blast. We've so loved working with you guys and the rest of the HCAM team. And you guys have been incredibly flexible and patient with us as we've evolved. Uh, it's, it's been a wonderful opportunity that we so greatly appreciate and I just can't thank you guys enough with how you've been wonderful with our schedules, flexible with um, your time with us and how we've been able to um, uh, be part of the HCAM family. Coming up at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, April 7th, Hopkinton Police Chief Edward Lee and Hopkinton Fire Chief Ken Clark will be live on HCAM taking your questions. You can email questions ahead of time to chiefslog at hcam.tv. For more about upcoming programming on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Wednesday, April 1st, at 11.30 a.m., Police Chief Ed Lee and Sergeant Joe Bennett discuss how the police use social media and how online information can be used to make informed decisions in the Chief's log. It helps us do it to keep current and show the day-to-day -day aspects of what we do, as well as share information that's more timely, for instance, with uh, traffic jams and accidents that allows uh, us to connect with the community and help them throughout their day as well. At 12 p.m., the top five Hiller sports moments for the fall and winter seasons are counted down in the latest edition of HCAM News Focus. At 12.30 p.m., local teacher Sabine Rozaki shares the experiences of Muslim women around the world in gender in Islam. 
The next school committee meeting will air on Thursday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. live on HCAM TV. The meeting can also be viewed on our live stream at hcam.tv slash live. We also have a lot coming up for you this week on HCAM Ed. Hopkinton Middle School students hear poetry and then try their hands at writing their own poetry in the Hopkinton Middle School Poetry Cafe. 2014 Boston Marathon men's division winner Meb Keflazigi continues to share his inspiring words at Hopkinton High School. The Hopkinton Middle School String Ensembles and the Hopkinton High School Orchestra perform in this Music in Our Schools concert. And last but not least, the Hopkinton High School Drama Ensemble performs The Tempest, the Shakespeare story of betrayal, castaways, and an airy spirit. To find out when all of these programs will air, visit hcam.tv slash education. Would you like to have all of this information and more sent to you every week? If so, just send me an email at courtney at hcam.tv. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkington, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkington-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to know about it. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy spring. i